I'd like to call this meeting of the April 16, 2018 Wilson County Board of Education to order. Members of the board, um, you have the agenda in front of you. What is your um, pleasure? Madam Chair. Mrs. Powell. I move that we approve the agenda for tonight's Wilson County Board of Education meeting, April 16, 2018. So. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve the agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Um, members of the board and members of the audience, we will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Farmer to be followed by a moment of silence. Please join us. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Members of the board, we have two sets of minutes for approval this evening, March 19, 2018, which was our regular meeting, and the minutes of March 27, 2018, which were our budget work session uh, minutes. What is your pleasure? Madam Chair. Mrs. Barnes. I move that we approve the minutes of March 19, 2018 regular board meeting and the meeting minutes of March 27, 2018 work session minutes. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve the March 19, 2018 regular board minute, me, meeting minutes and the March 27, 2018 budget work session minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay that the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Um, Mr. Farmer, if you would assist Dr. Mills in our good news presentations. <coughs> Board members, audience members, tonight we'd like to recognize the Wilson YMC and the Wilson Recreation Department for their support of our swimming lessons. So if Kathy Davis is here from the Wilson YMCA or Johnson Etheridge from the Wilson Rec, if you guys would like to come down front, please. Let me tell you a little bit about what they've been doing. They've been great partners as we work together to offer swimming lessons to second graders. Uh, for those of you that may remember, this was something that was offered to students many years ago. We were really thrilled to be able to bring them back. We appreciate the YMCA for securing the funds for the lessons and the Rec for providing the pool. Approximately 800 students received a week of lessons for about 40 minutes a day. Ms. Davis shared with us how incredible it was to see the progress the students made in just a short amount of time. Some were terrified of the water on the first day, and she also shared that by the end of the week, she was confident all the students would remain calm and recall basic swimming techniques if they became overwhelmed while in the water. I also want to thank our very own Dr. Cheryl Wilson for her part in making this possible. She also participated in the swimming lessons, I think, as well as all the teachers and volunteers. It's our hope that the lessons will continue in the future and become a part of the second grade experience year after year. We're very fortunate to have you both as partners. Thank you very much for our students and our families. And tonight for character education, I'd like to ask Kaylin Wells, kindergartner at Stansford, to step up front. She's being recognized for responsibility. Ms. Hayes, you want to come up with her? Ms. Hayes is her principal. Let me tell you a little bit about Kaylin. Got it. Here's Kaylin's special information. You ready? We're right here with you. Okay. <laughs> Kaylin recently served as principal of the day at Stansburg Elementary as a reward for her stellar fundraising efforts. We know Ms. Hayes needs all the help she can get. <laughs> We're glad you were there. She assisted Principal Jenny Hayes with greeting students in the morning, 
helping with lunch duty, observing classroom teachers, and assisting with dismissal. Now that is a lot. Ms. Hayes said that Kaylin hung in there the entire day and was a great apprentice. She's also an academic all-star and always exhibits good behavior. We're so proud of her and hope the experience sparked an interest in one day her working for Wilson County Schools as a principal. So congratulations, Kaylin. Parents? Yes. Okay. Where are they? April. Here we go. And thanks to Schwartz and Shaw for the gift card that she can put to good use after her long day working as a principal. <laughs> Thank you so much for the good news. Um, now under the chairman's report, uh, since we last saw you, we have had spring break and we hope that everyone had a great spring break and we're now ready for the last nine weeks of school and the time is going by rather quickly. We have smart cookies um, that we still need to do. <coughs> Mrs. Barnes uh, attended smart cookies at Vic Elementary School with the class of kindergarten teacher Mrs. Lynch. March the 21st and the smart cookies at New Hope with um, the teacher of the year Amanda Evans had to be rescheduled and that new date is April the 23rd and Ms. Barnes I think you have that as well. We do need volunteers for April 25th at Hearn at 2 o'clock, May 1st at Wells at 2 o'clock, May 8th at Rock Ridge at 2 o'clock, and May 16th at Vincent Bynum at 2 o'clock. Do we? I'll take her. I'll do Vincent Bynum. Who was that first one? Mr. Mercer just took okay. that one. That okay. was Hearn. Okay. I'll take Which one? Ms. Boyette? I was going to say Rock Ridge. <laughs> want to do Vincent Bynum? I'll do Vincent Bynum. Ms. Bynum? Mm -hmm. I'll do Vincent Bynum. Tell me the date again, Dr. Pitch. May 16th for Vincent Bynum. <coughs> and Wells at May 1st. Do we have any? I'll take one. All right. Thank you so very much. Um, a reminder that there will be lunch and laughter event at um, the Country Club on Wednesday the 18th at noon. This is an event sponsored by WEP. Um, at our last meeting, which was our work session, um, we had a moment of silence in regard to the death of Mrs. Bobby Jones, the chair of the Wilson County Commissioners, and we acknowledge that death um, at this meeting tonight, and um, her leadership will be missed, but we do know that, um, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Boyette has become the new chair. Um, he was the vice chairman, and he will now serve as the chair of Wilson County Commissioners. Several members recently attended the National School Boards Association Conference, um, and they brought back information that is being shared with various persons in the system. We also acknowledge that the gentleman's agreement was one of the <coughs> breakout sessions that was um, presented during the conference, that information was well received, and though it did not receive the Magno Award that we nominated it for, we are quite proud of the work that is being done with that particular group. And um, that concludes the Chairman's report. Um, I will turn it over to Dr. Mills for the Superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Board members, audience members, and, and uh, since our last board meeting, we had In Harmony March 22nd at Fike, and it was a really great night. We were proud of our elementary and middle school students who performed, and all the students had an artwork display. That was something new this year. We have many artistic students in our schools, and so it was really nice to be able to showcase them. I want to thank the teachers, the music teachers that put that on, the guest choreographer, and especially the Wilson Education Partnership. 
for continuing to hold the fundraiser. It's been 27 years. Wow. In fact, I thought that was a mistake, but they corrected me and said, no, it's 27 years. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a wonderful event, and we'll, we'll look forward to again next year. We held our budget work session on March 27th, and again, we've got some information in the, tonight's meeting about that. Uh, the North Carolina Symphony was in town and performed for our fifth graders on March 29th that morning. Great performance, and our students learned a lot. We're very excited to have them in town and, and to uh, have them be a part of that event with our students. We've got some upcoming events that make sure you've got on your calendar as well. Uh, Dr. Fitz just mentioned the WP fundraiser on April 18th. That's at noon at the Wilson Country Club with Lunch and Laughter. And tickets can be purchased through WP or at the Blissful Boutique or the Nook. That's April 18th at noon. On April 30th, we'll be interviewing the Owen Scholars with high school seniors interested in teaching for Wilson County Schools. We have a full day of that now, so that's a really great great day and a, and a great event. Um, and it'll be a long day, but that's a good thing to have. So we're excited about that coming up, we're excited for our students. Uh, May 1st is also the Watt Commitment Night for the incoming freshmen, that's at 6 p.m. But we also have a conflict because we have a May 1st budget presentation to the county commissioners. So we may want to talk about coordinating that because those two uh, events are both very important. Something we're very excited about that's coming up that everyone should mark down is the New York Theater Ballet is performing for our fourth graders on May 8th at Fike High School. That's May 8th at Fike High School. There are two performances so we can get all of our students through. One's at 9.30 a.m. and the other's at 12.30 p.m. And we're very excited our students have the opportunity to experience this. And we want to thank Jennifer Lance uh, with the Wilson Economic Development Council for her hard work to make this happen. So we're very excited about that. Finally, um, hard to believe it's here, but May 17th will be WECA graduation at Fike from 7 to 9 p.m. And Madam Chair, that's all I have. All right. Thank you so very much. Please be mindful <coughs> of the dates and if your calendars permit uh, for as many of the activities as allowable. We are now at the portion of our um, meeting where the public has the opportunity to give input. I remind each person is granted three minutes for his or her presentation. This portion of the meeting is for the board to hear matters of interest from the public. However, issues and concerns that address specific personnel or students should not be discussed during the public portion of the meeting, but may be presented in writing to the superintendent or the board of education. We have 13 persons who have signed up to address the board. Um, <coughs> the majority speaking on Spanish immersion and three that are signed up to speak in regard to fight soccer. The first person is Marcos Alicias. If I mispronounced your name, um, my apologies, but we'll listen to see how you pronounce it. Actually, you did a great job. Okay. <laughs> uh, good, ev good evening, members of the board and all attendees. My name is Marcos Alises. I am the father of Zoe Catalea Alises, a kindergarten in the Spanish immersion program at Elm City Elementary. I came here tonight to voice my opinion on the need for the Spanish immersion program in Wilson County Schools. Now, the hardest job I've ever had is being a parent. This is coming from a man who grew up as a military brat, moving every two to three years, a soldier who has been deployed to the desert of Afghanistan and Kuwait, and a husband and father who works in DC all week to provide for his family. The responsibility of molding your child to become simply a good person can be a stressful task. Every decision my wife and I make, we examine and re-examine, hoping we don't screw up. And truly, you don't know if you screw up till 20 years from now. <laughs> One of those decisions was signing up Zoe for the Spanish Immersion Program. My wife and I have quickly realized the many benefits of the program for our daughter Zoe. I have to say that her teachers, Ms. Riano and Ms. Rojifo, which I believe is actually in the room, <laughs> um, have done an amazing job in recognizing Zoe's strengths and weaknesses. They have made her love reading. They have made her excited about attending school. And they have given her the joy of knowing another language. They have also provided her the greatest gift of all, which is speaking with her grandparents in their native language. Yes, I am Puerto Rican and Panamanian. Zoe's abuelos are so delighted to be able to talk Spanish with, her, with their grandchild. 
This program means a lot to my family on so many different levels. But the key thing is it is a preparing Zoe for a world outside of Wilson County. I believe that learning another language opens up new words, new concepts, new descriptions, allowing us to think in different patterns. Beyond my family's personal reasons, there's a great deal of research available to support language immersion programs. The data is clear that the ability to read, write, and speak another language significantly enhances children's ability to comprehend complex issues, more fully understand the world around themselves, and more quickly develop critical thinking skills. All these are positive outcomes for the students of the Spanish Immersion Program. We have seeked out legislative support for the program, and we have been pleased to find that our state legislators have consistently supported language immersion programs. In fact, they, have, they will continue to support these programs by continuing to allow transfers for international teachers. When all other positions transfer flexibilities will be eliminated. We need to look to the future and move forward by investing and dedicating resources into this program, by developing a plan that outlines the goals and objectives up to at least to fifth grade. Please remember my daughter's name, Zoe Catalea Lisas, and all the other students in the program when you make your final decisions. Remember each parent who shares their, their thoughts and their stories tonight when you make your decisions. I appreciate your time and your consideration. Y'all have a good evening. Erin Burton, regarding Spanish immersion. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Erin Verton, and my son Phoenix is a first grader within the Spanish Immersion Program. Um, you've heard Passionate Pleas tonight. You've heard them at, at prior board meetings. So today I'm kind of coming to you speaking as a member of Wilson's business community. I have the pleasure of representing BB&T as um, a board member of the Wilson Education Partnership. And with the challenges that are facing the SI program, you know, I really see that as the Spanish Immersion Program is an economic advantage to our county. Um, and so I reached out to some senior leadership at bb &T to talk through with them the challenges the program is facing today and um, see if they would support the program and get their thoughts. So I want to read to you quickly um, two letters of support. Um, Dear esteemed members of the board, I am writing on behalf of bb &T in support of the Spanish Immersion Program. As the regional president of the Northeastern region, I play a leading role in ensuring that the communities in which I serve preserve programs and initiatives which lead to long-term economic growth and stability. The inability to attract qualified labor is a significant constraint to Eastern North Carolina's growth. The Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond has reported that beginning in 2011, labor force growth, labor force growth in Eastern North Carolina has underperformed that of the nation and the state by a wide margin. Business leaders have expressed concern that the problems may worsen for their companies as their existing workers get older and fewer younger workers enter the labor force. The Wilson County school system has made great strides to close this gap through the introduction of innovative programs such as Wilson Early College Academy and the Wilson Academy of Applied Technology. Outside of fluency in a highly marketable language, research has shown that dual language programs provide a variety of educational benefits such as increasing analytical and problem solving skills. Through the continuation and growth of the Spanish Immersion Program, Wilson County is not only developing a highly qualified workforce, but presents an educational program which can be marketed to encourage prospective qualified workers to accept positions in Wilson County and have their children attend Wilson County schools. I hope that the Wilson County Board of Education will seek opportunities to enable the Spanish Immersion Program to continue, grow, and become a beacon of light for our community. Sincerely, Scott Evans, Regional President. Dear Wilson County School Board members, bb and is committed to making the communities in which we live better places to be. My role as bb and multicultural banking manager was born of this commitment. We believe that diversity and inclusion result in us being able to provide better services and forge lasting relationships with our clients. Diversity enhances our overall creativity and drives the innovation that bb and needs to compete and be successful in the financial services industry. This is a commonly held belief in the corporate world and the benefits have been widely documented. The benefits of di diversity are applicable to our school systems and communities as well. 
I was thrilled to learn of the Progressive Wilson County Schools Spanish Immersion Program, which gives students the opportunity to gain exposure to other cultures and learn the Spanish language from native Spanish speakers. What a highlight for your community. I understand that the program is in danger due to budgetary constraints, and while I certainly understand the financial duress that our nation's schools are constantly battling, I am encouraged by the strong parent support of your local immersion program. I applaud the parents of Spanish immersion students for their understanding of the amazing opportunity afforded to their children and for being committed to working with the school system to maintain and grow the program. My hope is that the school board will nurture the Spanish immersion program, work with parents, and engage the community to build a sustainable program and not make a decision which is limited to the resources you currently have. Sincerely, sincerely, Louis Lobo, Executive Vice President, Multicultural Banking Manager. Appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Lee Willifert regarding fight soccer. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mary Lee Williford, and my daughter is a senior co captain for the Fike High School soccer team. I am here tonight to express my concern at the handling of allegations made against her coach and the rest of the team. Um, Mrs. Williford. Yes, ma'am. You are getting into a personnel issue. And I'm not going to mention any names. Well, you don't have to mention names. Just this Can we discuss process? The sentiment that you are expressing has already been publicly made, so we cannot have that discussion at this point in time. It I understand that. It personnel issues. My concern is that there are 16 girls who have not been supported by Wilson County Schools at all or protected. They have reached out to their administration and they've received no support whatsoever. Mrs. Williford, we are in the process of handling this and this is not the arena that you are able to have this discussion. At this may point. I please submit my letter to the yes, board? Yes, you may. Thank you. Thank you very much. regarding Spanish immersion. Good evening. Good evening. I believe that we have something that unifies everyone in this room tonight. A love for the children in our community, a desire for them to succeed through an excellent education. Our fight for Spanish immersion is a fight for an excellent education. In this program, my child is challenged to surpass the current standards of education and to achieve what her abilities dictate. We thank you for the continued opportunity. Knowing that we, the school system, the administration, teachers and parents have a common goal to provide an excellent education for the children of Wilson County, we would like to know how we can collaborate and use our energy to better our school system and, for, and find solutions for the issues that have held this program back. I'm requesting a conversation with the administration regarding goals, plans, and the future of the Spanish Immersion Program that includes parents, teachers, and administrators. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Claudia Jenkins regarding Spanish Immersion. Hola, mi nombre es Polly Jenkins y quiero seguir en español a quinto grado. I need somebody to translate because I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell her what she said? Can you tell her what she said? I feel like she wanted to be in Spanish more than until she got to fifth grade. Chet regarding Spanish immersion.
Good evening. Good Thank evening. You. Thank you for welcoming me back. Um, I've been thinking about Spanish Merton a lot over the last 12 to 15 months. As you all know, I've been coming to your board meetings every month for the last year. And again, we're waiting for a decision. Um, many different topics I've been asked to talk about, but I'd like to talk about what I deal with today. I'm the manager of, I work in IT risk and security for MetLife in Raleigh. I manage a team of five people, actually six. One person is from Mexico, one person is from Uganda, and I also have a, a resource in India that I talk to once a week. So we need to continue this program. I have to deal with multicultural people every single day of my work in MetLife. And we need to have this background. And this is an excellent program for our children to start with and work their way through for multicultural. The benefit it brings to them is so good. We have all these teachers here from so many different countries, from Central and uh, Latin America, in South America, excuse me. You know, I, I know you, you don't want to, um, it's difficult because we, and I worry about this, the continued succession of this program. You know, every, every year we're having this discussion. We need to find a long-term solution to this. I very well hope and pray that we'll come to a nice, solid, equitable decision that we can support and continue to support through the next following five or 10 years here in Wilson County. If you saw the newspaper article this weekend, this was referred to as the crown jewel of Wilson County School Public Schools, and I firmly believe that, and I know it to be true from what I deal with in my work every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sarah Robbins regarding bike soccer. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Sarah Robbins. I am a retired teacher of 30 years, employed by Wilson County Schools for all 30 years. I have three points to address tonight. One, last week during school hours, all members of the Fike Varsity women's soccer team were pulled into the office personal items were removed from them and each player was interviewed in an assistant principal's office by a still unidentified gentleman Mrs. Robbins. who no one i'm not mentioning it mrs robbins this is uh, being handled this is not the appropriate setting for this discussion then i'll go to my second point all right we'll see if that one stands I resent all members of the squad having been accused in the media as participating in the incident currently under review. Not Mrs. all members of the squad, squad were even aware of Mrs. the incident. Robbins, yes? We are dealing with this issue right now. I can't let this continue. Could you let me continue when I ask for support of the girls who are on the team? Yes, you may ask them if they Thank want you. to raise their hand or stand, but we cannot adjudicate this issue in this setting. And I'm not asking you to. Well, we'll see where it goes and if we have to, um, Thank you. to stop you again. The whole squad at Games Away from School have been heckled and called bullies and hazers. Wilson County Schools has not offered support to this team in the form of counseling or even with the presence at the games. These young ladies are confused, worried about their soccer program, and anxious when representing their schools and in need of your support. Point three, Fife's women's soccer coach no, is neither the, is no, their mentor, no, their teacher, Mrs. and Robbins. advisor. Mrs. Robbins, yes. yes, we cannot continue your discussion at this point. This is not the venue. That becomes a personnel issue. 
Is there a venue in which the public can speak? You may send a letter to the superintendent or to the Board of Education, but this is not the venue that we can allow you to continue this discussion. Is there a petition that could be allowed to be accepted by the superintendent or the school board? You are free to submit a petition if that is your choice, but we cannot handle this in the Then expect system. one. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it. regarding Spanish immersion. <laughs> if you all would let her come forward, please. Good evening, board members. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak with you. I'm gonna make this very short. Um, my daughter's name is Jalise Ham, and she's already wearing a scarlet letter A because she's identified as at risk because she's being raised by a single mother. When we look at the statistics of individuals when we're talking about dropout rates, we divide it by their parenting, um, the household, we divide it by the race, and we also, um, we divide it by the race and the sex as well. As a mother, I look up and I ask God every day, give me the resources and the tools I need in order to make the right decision to help her out. And when the Spanish immersion showed up, I felt like that was the best opportunity to reduce the probability of her becoming pregnant before she gets out of high school and even reduce the probability of her not graduating. I mean, of her, reduce the probability of her not graduating. I felt like this was a program that would assist her and allow her to excel and be a pillar in her community. So please, let's continue this Spanish immersion program so I can continue to put in her the importance of getting a fine education in Wilson County Schools. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Natalie Hanchett, Spanish Immersion. Good evening, my name is Natalie Hanchett. I have a third grader in the Spanish immersion program and also a rising kindergartner. I just had a few things, a few questions here actually. Um, I had asked several times for a copy of the budget that was submitted to the county commissioners. Um, I was told that I could get the Spanish immersion budget, but um, what I was requesting was not able to be given to me. I was um, capable of finding out some information through the county commissioner's office and I'm just trying to understand, the, for 2016-17, the total spending amount that was requested for Spanish immersion was $63,292. So I'm trying to understand that number compared to, at the last board meeting, the, um, the number that was prevent, uh, presented from Dr. Wilson as um, $247,602. I don't understand the discrepancy with those numbers. Um, I, would, I would love to get some clarification there. Um, and I also wanted to mention, I was here earlier during the Instructional Services Committee meeting. You mentioned a short-term and long-term plans for implementing Spanish immersion. And we would like to know um, if we can request a copy of these plans. We are especially interested in seeing the plans for annual evaluation. And we will be having this Will we be having this conversation again next year? And what will be the indicators of success to ensure that the program will continue? My additional concern is there is also a screening that is um, for the kindergartners of Spanish immersion where they have to know 70% of their letters and sounds. My concern is that all the other counties that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to about five because I am definitely going to get my kindergartner in Spanish immersion and I want it to be here in Wilson County. But all the other counties I've spoken to do not do that assessment and I don't understand why Wilson County does. My number one concern with that is we <coughs> love the diversity of the program. We don't want it to be a program of the elites. <coughs> we want it to be diverse. When you do that, you are eliminating many children that way. 
many counties that I've spoken to, they do f two full kindergarten classes. And I feel from the, I, I wholeheartedly feel that if we promoted this program, we could easily get two full kindergarten classes. And that would be 50 additional students to a program that's 116, 117. And I'm begging you, I thank you for all of your time and your efforts, and we really do appreciate all that you do. And I, I don't think we can tell you how much we do appreciate it. But we are concerned for this program. We don't want families to leave Wilson County. And our concern is if we don't have K through fifth grade, like we discussed when we registered, people will leave and we won't be able to sustain the program. And we want this more than anything. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mary uh, Hinton Coaster. Good evening. My name is Mary Hunter Coster. Okay, uh, that's okay. Um, I'm speaking for the second time. I was here last month as well. I have a second grader, Della Ruth Coster, who's in Spanish immersion and started when she was in kindergarten. And this year we enrolled our son, Jackson Coster, who's in kindergarten. Both are doing exceptionally well. Tonight I come to you very concerned that the last few meetings, especially that I've been to, I keep hearing the fact that we that this program is K through four. I was shocked. I turned to the other parents and looked at them waiting to hear the fifth grade. This was the first time that I had hear, heard that this was a K through four program. When VIF came to Wells Elementary and did a wonderful advertising program to support this uh, dual curriculum, they said this program was a commitment. It was a commitment for K through five. And I understood that because who would want to start a program and enroll your child only halfway through or for a couple of years? That is not the point of dual immersion. Um, Kevin Smith was actually there with the VIF that day, which is now participate. But these children have been so resilient. They've moved around from school to school. What do you expect for them to do when they get to fifth grade if it's not going to be continued in fifth grade? Where did this K through four come from? They're already getting 50% instruction at that point in English and 50% in Spanish. What transition do you expect them to have? They're learning exactly the same as their English peers in a traditional cl English classroom. They're just learning it in Spanish and doing quite well doing so. The current fourth graders have been moved three times and they are performing extremely well. They are currently in a 3-4 combination class. Why can we not have a 4-5 combination class? What's going to happen to these six fourth graders that need to go to fifth grade? I've never heard of any program in an elementary school that did not go through the entire curriculum of that school. An elementary is K through five. Why would we need to stop their dual language experience in their final year of their elementary curriculum? Where will they go? Will they go back to their home school? Will they have to transition again? These children have been so resilient and we are trying to push the limits of their resilience even more. My daughter wanted to come tonight and she's in second grade, she's eight years old and she's so passionate about this program and I held her back and said, told her to stay home tonight because I'm worried about her anxiety level. What is going to happen if she hears that this is a K through 4 program? What am I to tell her? What are we all to tell our children? What happens to them for that final year? Why does it matter? That, why are you not continuing it for that final year? What is the value in that and how will we enter new programs? Is it time? I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. David Burris regarding Span Spanish immersion.
Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Mills, Dr. Fitch, board members. Thanks again for letting us speak tonight on behalf of the Spanish Immersion Program. I was pleasantly surprised after attending the Instructional Services Committee meeting to hear the committee was going to recommend to the board the continuation of the Spanish Immersion Program through the fourth grade with an annual review requirement. This was great news. However, we would like to see the fifth grade option left open until additional funding can be found. It's important to be able to complete the curriculum through the elementary school level. Mr. Farmer made a comment. He commented that the Spanish Immersion Program was a jewel of a program that must be kept. The other board members present all agreed. This is a positive move for the Wilson County School System. It demonstrates a partnership with parents and students to offer program diversity. However, it leaves questions about the longevity of the program. Our Spanish Immersion Program is still at a crossroads. It's time to create a scalable plan to increase enrollment and bring the cost down. Thanks for recognizing the program has a solid foundation in place. We have an engaged team of parents, educators, staff, and a principal willing to see the program expand and succeed. Please share with us your short and long-term goals for the program. We've heard in the past that the reason the program was shrinking was due to the lack of a plan for the program. In business, we say, fail to plan, then plan to fail. We would like to see a partnership with all the stakeholders to create a long-range, viable, sustainable plan for the success of the program. The reality is our students need dual language proficiency to, complete in a global, to compete in a global economy. Spanish is by far the most speak, spoken non-English language in the U.S. According to a September 5, 2013 Pew Research Center report, we, there were 37 million Spanish speakers in the U.S with a projection of between 39 and 43 million by 2020. Thanks again to the board for your time and efforts to find a way to make this program work with English. With English and Spanish proficiency, you've opened up the entire Western Hemisphere, the entire Western Hemisphere for our children. Let's formulate a plan together to put the Wilson Spanish Immersion Program at the top of the 140 plus dual language immersion programs currently in the state. Thanks again. Thank you. Whit Putney, Fike Soccer. Thank you very much, board. Um, in light of some of those that have spoken before me, I'll try to keep my comments uh, very generic and brief. I had the pleasure of uh, playing soccer for Fike High School from 2000 through 2004. Uh, I consider my experience uh, to be something that I look back on very fondly and uh, consider it to be uh, a character building endeavor. Um, I'm not privy to some of the recent things that have occurred and I don't plan on speaking to those. Uh, I will say uh, just as a word of advice, please do take into consideration that sometimes it's better to take your time to come to the appropriate decision than to hastily come to what comes to be an incorrect decision. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Demetrius Harvey regarding Spanish immersion. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Demetrius Harvey and I'm a proud parent of Christian and who's a kindergartner and AJ who's a third grader at Elm City's Spanish Immersion Program. And I wanted to share why I hope you will vote and continue the Spanish Immersion Program. Well, first of all, the impact on my kids. Uh, my boys, they both love it. They love the experience and they're enthused about going to school. The look on a kid's face who, who's ready to go to school is, is, is priceless. And this program provides them that. It provides them a, a sense of uh, purpose, a sense of pride, uh, to know that they will be able to be competitive in a global society and to take advantage of it and to succeed. And that's what makes this program in this particular county special. I did have other things I was going to read, but I'm not going to go over three minutes, but I just want to say, uh, 
I, I grew up in Raleigh. My wife grew up in Greenville. We live here in Wilson because it's a, it's, a, it's a very good convenience for both of us to travel to our jobs. We found Wilson to be uh, a, a great place to live for a number of reasons. We love your uh, parks and rec. We love a lot of the, I would say, progressive ways you're trying to be here as a town, which is very good because it reminds me a little bit of Raleigh to some degree. So to have an educational program match that intensity is something you want. Because at the end of the day, when you have a family who has kids growing up in the school system, the one thing you look for is programs or things that will put them over the top, that will make them better than the average school system to their left and right. And this program does that. So if this program wasn't here, I would, I would say it would be very easy to consider doing whatever I have to do to move my family to a place that will put them in that position. And that is the reality. So getting it from K through five here in this city, in this town, is very important to match everything else you have going on outside because it just will not, mer it just will not fit. You can't be progressive on sports and rec and as a community and have a educational system that is behind the eight ball and can't compete. And if you don't have the Spanish Immersion Program, honestly, you will not be able to compete because I think families will literally move and if you want a city and a town to have roots and to grow and to nourish, you want to have a young family grow to be an old family in the same place. Thank you. Thank you. We thank each of the persons who came to address the board. Uh, members of the board, you know that um, there are certain options that are available. Uh, for those who are looking um, or speaking on Spanish immersion, that is already on our agenda and that will be um, addressed at a later point in this meeting. For those who are here for bike soccer, uh, we are dealing with that situation as well but we will respond to each of you in kind, either um, from the administration or from myself as the board chair. Um, Ms. Boyette, you need a... I need, may have a big excuse for just a minute. Yes, thank you. As we proceed with the um, meeting, we are at the point for our committee reports. The first is accountability and technology services. Um, Mrs. Barnes. Madam Chair and members of the board, my committee report will be fairly short. Hold up one second, if you would, please. Mr. Parrish did what he said he was going to do. Yeah, he'll take care of business. Yeah, I think we can do something too. I missed it on mine. It's going to be a mistake. 
think they went and ran with the troops. Mm -hmm. Going right out. We took this as an opportune time to break with uh, the movement of uh, part of the audience out of the room. So now we will get to uh, the Accountability and Technology Services Committee report. Mrs. Barnes. Madam Chair, members of the board, the Accountability and Technology Committee met this morning at 9.30 a.m. The members present were Ms. Powell, Mr. Mercer, Dr. Fitch, Dr. Mills, and Executive Director of Technology, Ms. McGloy. Uh, there was one action item on the agenda, and that was the second reading of draft policy 7335, which is the employee use of social media. Uh, since the first reading, there were no changes made or needed to be made to the policy. So the policy is fairly straightforward, and this committee would like to recommend to the full board the adoption of policy 7335, employee use of social media, and entertain any questions. So is that a motion? Mm -hmm. No, second. Okay. It, is, it has been moved and properly seconded that we approve policy 7335, employee use of social media, as second read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Madam Chair, that ends my report. Thank you so much. Um, next is the Administrative Services Committee, Mr. Mercer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Administrative Service Co Services Committee met this afternoon at 4 o'clock. We had two information items and three action items. And um, the first one being child nutrition meal prices. If you uh, look at your handout, you'll find that uh, we're fortunate that our nutrition program is operating in the black financially. So it's uh, managing itself. The meal prices are recommended that, uh, that they be unchanged at breakfast $1.25 and lunch $2.60. And we're continuing the uh, free, lunch, free breakfast and lunches at all elementary schools plus Darden and Daniels again this year. Uh, committee members, is there anything you'd like to add or expand on? No, just how happy we are that uh, we're not having to raise the breakfast and the lunch price. That's right. Good news. That's right. Okay. With that said. Mr. Henry. We, yes, sir. We had an opportunity to go to a couple of um, breakout sessions on meals, and um, we certainly do not have a unique situation. Uh, we had a chance to hear the person that's responsible for Los Angeles, and they were $660 million in the hole, and some of the other large um, systems. So I applaud. Uh, our director for putting us back in the black. And so, I mean, here's, I'm, I appreciate it too because it's real easy to be connected to the school system and feel like you have uh, somebody to lean on, but being able to function so you don't have to lean on the school system is great. And it's also good for the community for the process uh, to remain the same. Any other comments? Okay, the uh, second item was the uh, Wilson Area Student-Based Health Clinic, WASH, Addendum to Memorandum of Understanding. The, um, the, I think the memorandum, and uh, Dr. Mills, help me if you would. Um, the memorandum has been updated, both for Forest Hill, uh, maybe some, but also for Bedding Field, and Bettyfield being a second site that would serve Bettyfield High School and the and the Watt program. 
And if it's my understanding, there will be basically one staff for both places. And they'll have hours at each place. And the, in the conversation, it mentioned that there would be some uh, telemedicine, which to me would kind of mean, uh, it, or it would suggest that you would have to have someone at each site to use that for the communication sake. But I think that's, is that um, an assumption or is it something to? I think the biggest issue with the uh, MOU was to make sure, there's a couple things, one was make sure we got the wording in there for what, that was the questions that the board had last meeting and the time frame of it. And then now that we've got this in place, uh, we discussed going back and talking to folks from the uh, health department about what would work best in terms of um, availability and following those times and hours. We had a question came up about the early college times for those days when they were closed. We're trying to serve the most students and what would work with their levels of service requirements and their staffing. There was some talk at one point about telemedicine, but I don't know how far that's gotten. But I think the important thing is that they've been very, very supportive about having this um, clinic and health center um, on Bedfield's campus that gives us another presence on the other side of the, the county. And there was a question asked at the uh, committee meeting about, um, and again, staff members can attend that one as well as they can at Forest Hills now that would save some distance on many folks. There was also a question about other students and maybe in the rural areas coming in. So those are questions I would have to follow up with the health department as well as the staffing piece, but they've been excellent partners, so helpful through the whole process. And I think the, the questions you had about access for students and through the walk to Bettyfield campus, we um, took care of that issue because they would have um, generic ID cards to be able to badge in and badge out, and as well as the hours, and we solidified that. We could always come back and revisit this as we get in place. Well, I'm, I would, I'd be surprised once we get it in place and use it that we would yeah. find, if we didn't find ways to improve it. Well, we also talked about bringing to the board in June data from this past year at the Wash Center at Forest Hills to look at the trends and take an exam, um, eyeball of kind of where our data is and what's been the success of that and things we need to work on. And uh, again, feedback from them has been awesome, but I think that's something we should do anyway at this point, that, that whole process. And board, for your, for your information, the, the breakout for how the practitioners will divide your time is in paragraph number nine in the MOU, just so if you want to reference it, yeah. it's, it's right there. And it, yeah. it does address telemedicine in the last sentence. It does. So. All right. Thank you. Committee members, others, any comments or additions, questions? Again, um, Mr. Mercer, what exactly is the telemedicine that will be administered? You mentioned telemed telemedicine equipment, so that, what is well, that reference? To me, and, and you probably from the name of it know as much about it as I do, Okay. but it would be where I think they could recommend treatment or something for without being present. Okay. That's what I understand it to be. But there would be some between the two. Uh, if they say they're at Forest Hills, they might could help somebody at Bettingfield or vice versa. But now that's my limited understanding of it. Mr. Mercer, at School for the Deaf, right? Gosh, I don't know, 15 years, we've had a, a relationship with ECU and we have televisions hooked up and monitors. So if a kid comes in, and of course, being a 24 hour residential school, we were able to go online and have a doctor and examine hands-on but all the you know pertinent information would go straight to the doctor the doctor would see the child and ask the nurse there to do whatever and they would make uh, some kind of a, a decision there on the spot at any time I don't know if we have that capability here or not but it worked out very very well at the school for the day well that would that would expand on my understanding of it because it would mean that you could uh, not only between but in addition to mm -hmm. Uh, have the help of someone. But I think this will become clearer as we delve into it. In, yes, ma'am. It's also available to teachers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Teachers, matter of fact, teachers and employees, and I don't think it's 
restricted employees at that school no, as any employee in the county, from what I understand. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Now, in the action items, energy management is the first one. Um, this is, we discussed it at some length at the last uh, regular board meeting. Uh, synergistics uh, uh, presented a proposed solution for addressing energy savings needs. And uh, I think administration has communicated with some other systems that have uh, had experience with them with positive comments. Um, I, my understanding is, is it's uh, a way of saving without uh, a lot of risk as far as being an expense, they're going to save us as much as it would uh, cost and save us more. I also was uh, interested in that, if I remember it correctly, it's not going to uh, do things that would uh, hamper somebody's doing their job, like you know, like taking a light bulb out of a drink machine or a not light, not mm -hmm. on, or something that would prove to be inconvenient, probably even, maybe even create a hazard. Uh, it sounds like it's a very sensible things that they're doing, like monitoring to make sure that systems that aren't needed aren't cycling on at off hours and weekends and stuff like that. Uh, Dr. Mills, do you have anything like that? Remember from a conversation at the February meeting, this involves calibrating existing equipment, life cycle information, and on our um, existing capital needs as well to help us plan. It does involve a staff member that they will provide at their cost to do those assessments and provide the information and work with our staff to do that. And when we sign off on any savings or any um, billings that they show, as well, so we have to agree to that each time we go through it, but there'll be a baseline period uh, as we start off, and that will be part of the calibration piece. Again, you're looking at over a, a five-year period what their estimates were, but I think the, um, the piece that's really helpful for us is getting the information on our equipment uh, from folks who, in many, many cases, either helped build the equipment or wrote the manuals on it to fine-tune those so we can provide the same level of service without additional cost or additional equipment um, and be prepared for when things do need to be replaced and that would affect our capital planning as well. So, And that was Dr. Croom's presentation. Dr. Dr. Yes. Croom. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any further comments or questions? Well, in that case, uh, Madam Chair, on behalf of the Administrative Services Committee, I move the Wilson County School Board approve pending uh, any necessary uh, a legal review that we approve the contract with Synergistics as Second. recommended by administration. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we um, approve the contract for Synergistic pending legal review. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Okay, on our next uh, action item is the audit report. Again, as uh, I remember, it's been being that we got a good audit. There were no findings, but there were uh, six recommendations, of which uh, uh, the IT people have dealt with or already addressed, I think, three or four of those. And the other two are considered minor. So it's a good audit report. And uh, you have you have a report that you, uh, uh, in hand, that you had the opportunity to review the particulars. Committee members or anyone, any additional comments? Or I don't qualify to speak to it, 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 it was a very good report. Mm -hmm. Any? Well, in that case, uh, 
On behalf of the Administrative Services Committee, I move the Wilson County School Board of Education accept the order as presented. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we accept the 2016-17 audit report as presented. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Okay, our final uh, action item is the local current expense and capital outlay budget. Uh, and there's been no changes in that since uh, we last uh, reviewed it. Any? Mr. Marsh, I'll, yes, I will we'll make a comment that kind of addresses um, a question that we had earlier. Um, this budget is our local budget, the money we get from the county commissioners. School systems also get money from the state and the federal government. So that way, when you're looking at any program, you may get money from the local budget, but you also get money from the state, and sometimes federal, sometimes not, depending on what the program is. So that's why there may be some discrepancies in some budget numbers. Just to that. This is just the local budget that we take to the county commissioners. Any, There's no change in this from our budget work session. So this is for for you to put into the record. Hearing no further discussion or comments, on behalf of the Administrative Services Committee, I move Wilson County Board of Education approve the 2018-2019 current expense, current expense and capital outlay budgets as presented by administration. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve the 2018-19 local current expense and capital outlay budgets as presented by the administration. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Uh, members of the board, this is the budget that we will be presenting um, to the county uh, commissioners uh, on May 1st, 2018. Um, it will go to the county commission prior to them, but this is uh, May 1st is when we actually go uh, to present our budget to the county commissioners. The next item on our agenda is the Instructional Services Committee. Um, we met this afternoon. There were three informational items and one action item. The three informational items dealt with the new English language arts and math standards, um, naloxone or Narcan, and school athletics at Wilson Academy of Applied <laughs> Technology. <coughs> um, as far as the uh, new English language arts and math standards, Periodically, the state uh, recalibrates and submits its uh, new standards that each system is asked to address. And in April of this year, of last year, I'm sorry, the State Board of Ed approved new English language arts standards for grades K through 12. And the implementation is to occur in the 2018-19 school years, meaning that students will be tested on the new standards beginning in the 2019-2020 school year. Um, and in June 2017, the new math standards for grades K through eight um, were passed and the implementation and testing on these new standards will occur in 2018-19. So our English language arts testing will be on the new standards beginning 2019-20 but the math standards, the testing will begin next year in 2018-19. Um, you were presented with information in regards to um, that information. If you have any questions, we will entertain that at this point in time. This is an informational piece so you see that they have given a timeline beginning at january of 1819 
uh, going through to August. So um, please direct any questions you may have to Dr. Wilson in regard to these new standards. The second item was in regard to naloxone or Narcan. Um, we have had presentations come before us about um, using naloxone in emergency situations for students who may be facing uh, drug overdoses. Um, there have been um, the Wilson County Substance Prevention Coalition um, in partnership with the Wilson County Sheriff's Office and with Wilson County Schools. Currently we are awaiting um, the Sheriff's Department and the Substance Abuse Coalition to sign the agreement. Concerns have been raised about um, the administration of medication because we do have policy 3620 that deals with the uh, administration of, mer of medication. So once that um, memorandum of understanding has been uh, completed and signed, uh, we can then have the discussion in conjunction with policy 3620 in terms of who will actually do the administration of um, the drug if it is needed. So that is basically another informational piece and um, as, that, as more information becomes available, it will be presented. The third item was the school athletic, um, athletics at Watt and I'm going to, um, I, I did have some data, let me find my notes. There were seven students currently at Watt who um, were eligible because when we started Watt, those students were going to be able to play sports. Um, but due to time constraints with scheduling with their time on the Wilson Community College uh, schedule, uh, that has proven to be problematic. Uh, Mr. Farmer raised some questions at the last board meeting in regard to away games and practice and schedules and the like. Uh, Mrs. Cox and uh, the principal and Jimmy Tillman have provided information that there are seven students who currently um, are attending Watt who have now decided not to stay at Watt due to schedules um, interfering with their ability to play sports. It was found that of those, all are male, six were playing football, one was playing basketball, one wrestling, and one with indoor track. Um, yes, that's more than seven, but somebody's playing at least multiple sports. Two of the students were coming from Hunt, two from Fike, three from Bedingfield. Moving forward with the class that is entering this year, um, they have signed their um, letters of agreement and intent, understanding that uh, athletics will not be an available option to them. It is the same as occurred with uh, Weka because of the community college schedule. So um, that I think Mr. Farmer may have answered the questions that you raised in regard to athletics at Watt. Are there any other questions in regard to any of those three points that we've made? All right. So the next item is the action item coming from um, the committee, and that is the Spanish Immersion Program. Um, Dr. Wilson presented to the board um, this afternoon um, the information in regard to Spanish immersion. Um, please know that um, this board has taken quite seriously the issue of the continuation or the discontinuation of um, this program. We are systematically evaluating all programs within the Wilson County School System and not just Spanish Immersion. As you are aware, we've already looked at IB, which is uh, now being consolidated onto one site. 
AVID, which has been discontinued at the middle schools due to lack of participation, but being continued at the high schools. Our um, AP capstone programs being um, expanded. And um, this board could have very easily have reached a decision on the future of this program um, months ago based on the number of students that we are now currently serving. Instead, this board saw a value in the Spanish immersion program and we have continued to ask the administration for more information in order to make an informed decision. This program currently addresses 0.010% of our total current population, 117 students out of 11,500 plus students. In looking at this program and other programs, and because we know that we are faced with class size reductions, we have 30 positions in art, music, and PE that are an issue of being lost due to the reductions that are being mandated by the legislature. We have received the many letters that were sent to us by some of the persons in the audience as well as other members of the community. There was even one that recommended a four-day school week in order to support Spanish immersion. With food insecurity at 22% in this county and 78% of our students on free and reduced lunch, that suggestion is not a possibility in order to keep Spanish immersion. Legislators have sent us letters urging dual language programs, yet many times they're not addressing increasing funding for the program. So we are at a point in time where there are other issues that come before us. Mrs. Boyette, I know that you had some points that you wanted to make in regard to the service of um, our overall student population. So before we make any recommendation and motion to the board, we're going to hear some comments not only from you but any other board members that they may choose to have. Thank you, Dr. Pitch. You're welcome. I'd like to share my thoughts from what I believe to be the silent majority. Those who understand that our primary responsibility is to, for the safety and a sound basic education for all of our students. And also those that know you can't spend more than you earn. Back in 2010 and 11, Wilson County Schools was a strong performing district. We were in fact fourth in this state in algebra. We were ranked 46th, 47th in the 115 school districts. Um, we had a change in leadership, new ideas, new programs. Spanish immersion was one of those new programs. BLAST was one, the Watt Academy concept was begun and implemented. During the time that Spanish immersion was growing, our other academics were falling. Our high school math went from that fourth to 94th. By 2015, we had 13 low performing schools. And we had dropped from, uh, excuse me just a minute. We had 13 low performing schools and dropped from our 40s ranking of the 115 to 87 of the 115. The Board of Education hired a new superintendent, Dr. Mills came in and we directed him to turn this place, you know, get our academics back up to where we knew they could be because they had been there. So he inherited Wilson as uh, when we were notified just a month or later that we were officially a low performing school district, one of the lowest 10 percent in this state. I was totally embarrassed. I know you were too. And as I said, his directive was to get this place turned around. And that's what he has begun to do. In one year, we went from 14 low performing schools to 12 low performing. A good step out, but a long way to go. Because um, we still have, overall, less than 50% of our students performing on grade level in reading, 
and in math. And if I were to go through and remind us of the stats, we have some schools that are below 20%. You know, if you let that sink in, 10 kids, two of them passing the reading or the math um, in the grade course test, whichever is appropriate. We have four elementary schools that are above 50%. We have one middle school that is at 50 and one high school is above 50 percent. So we have a long way to go. Getting the majority of our students back on grade level must be our number one priority for our funding and our efforts. During the period of decline, state funds have continued to be cut and emergency reserve funds were used to cover costs that there wasn't money. Now, we know that this is not a sustainable way to manage a budget. We're only one tornado, as Greensboro told us today, or hurricane away from needing those emergency funds for an, indeed an emergency. Our local county commissioners have continued to fund Wilson County Schools on a good basis. If you look at the 100 counties, we're somewhere um, in the 45 to 50 range, they gave us an extra 5 million and the statistics I was using were not counting that extra 5 million. So they've done a good job of supporting us. I say all this to explain. I know and believe that Spanish Immersion is a valuable program. I know that it does all of the good things that the parents have said as taught us told us about and that students have demonstrated. I don't doubt that for a moment. But I also appreciate that there are 11,300 and some students that are in need of our concern too and that they have to be our top priority when it comes to using our money. We must see that they get their basic education. They rely on us to speak for them. Perhaps we haven't done a good enough job of conveying our monetary restraints. Just this year, you know, we cut the reading intervention teachers and put them back in classrooms. We cut math coaches, reading coaches, just so we'd have, be able to stay in the black. It, it, it's dire. Um, this shows how pressed we are for funds. We've looked at efficiency experts. We're looking at energy savings that we just passed tonight. We're looking everywhere for every dime we can find, quite literally in the couches. If Spanish immersion continues, I think that we must ensure that there is a cap on the amount of funds that is expended for this. We can look at what the local state and if any federal funds, since there's such a small percentage of them that are um, low socioeconomic, I don't know if federal funds would apply, but uh, look at what the funds that they earn and, and then look, put a cap on how much extra money can be put into that, at least until we get our schools back to where they need to be, when we need to be ranked at least in the 40s of the 115 districts. So I think that my, my vote is going to depend on can we ensure that we are fulfilling our responsibility for a basic education for all of our students. Okay, thank you. Any other board members have comments that they would like to make? All right. It is the recommendation of the uh, administration to this board to um, deal with the following. We were informed that, uh, and Mr. Mercer, I'm going to turn this over to you yes, because by the time I finish making my comments, that I will have a motion to make. Yes, You'll need to carry it. That we currently have 24 applications for 24 <coughs> kindergartners to enter the Spanish Immersion Program. Um, as Dr. Wilson had indicated, additional screening will determine their eligibility. Based upon the feedback that the members of this board um, have shared with the administration, their recommendation is 
one, that there be a continuation of a kindergarten through fourth grade Spanish immersion program. Due to the low enrollment and the transition year to middle school, they are recommending that fifth graders will not be considered for Spanish immersion programs so that the program would end at fourth grade and that we not consider a middle school pathway for Spanish immersion. They're also recommending that there be an annual review of the Spanish Immersion Program. And additionally, they are recommending that we allow the students who, are, who will be in fifth grade to be grandfathered at Elm City Elementary, the future Frederick Douglass Elementary, so as to not disrupt them and have them move yet again, as was talked about by some of the speakers this evening. That we do provide the transportation through a shuttle bus for those K-4 Spanish immersion students, as well as the grandfather fifth grade students. That at the middle school level, the students will return to their home base school. Um, with this request, we would then, um, with this recommendation, we would then charge the administration to come back at the May meeting with details regarding the specifics for the program to include but not be limited to marketing of the program, to class size maximum and class size minimums, to deal with issues of combination classes, that there be a cutoff date for transferring into the program either at K kindergarten level or first grade level and for them to provide to us other issues that are pertinent to this program. Um, therefore, Mr. Vice Chair, yes, on the recommendation of um, the Curriculum and Instruction Committee, those points that I mentioned uh, it is moved that we approve the continuation of Spanish immersion from kindergarten through grade four. Uh, and with the other points that I already stated, um, allowing those fifth graders that are currently fourth grade to be grandfathered in so that they can stay at Elm City Elementary. I'll try to repeat that. Uh, I'll give you my notes if that will help I, you. I think I can. You, you follow me and make sure I get it right. All right. The, um, is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and properly seconded that the Spanish Immersion Program be approved for grades K through 4 um, with the fifth graders grandfathered in to be eligible to stay at uh, Elm City. Uh, elementary and to be included in the transportation provided for the Spanish immersion students would be those fifth graders as recommended by administration. That there be an annual review. And there's also to be an annual uh, review. And that for middle school those students would return and to their home base. Yep. Yeah, the and the uh, middle school students would be uh, return to the home base school. Um, any further discussion, comments? I'd, I'd like to make one comment. In the, in the preparation to be reported back later, uh, in those plans, uh, Dr. Mills, if it could be uh, with the idea of trying to manage it in a way that it will be sustainable with that conscious effort included in that because that is important. Uh, any other comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign? No. Ma'am? No. So we have 6 1. Yes. Okay, it's recorded 6. In favor, one opposed. Uh, the meeting's yours. Thank you. Um, Mr. Farmer? Madam Chairman. 
I move Wilson County Board of Education go into closed session to consent of confidential personnel matters as provided in North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, A1 and 6, and 115C-319-321, and to consult with the Board of Education attorney and preserve the attorney-client privilege as provided in North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11, A3. I second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the Wilson County Board of Education go into closed session to consider confidential personnel matters as provided in North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11A1 and 6 and 115C-319-321 and to consult with the Board of Education attorney and preserve the attorney-client privilege as provided in North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11A3. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned to closed session. <laughs>